Okay. <laughs> Here we are live again with this, volume this time. Yes. Yes. So Dean on YouTube had been asking us to do a money belt. And he's like, you guys are never going to do that money belt. You're never going to do it. Well, Dean, we're going to make a liar out of you today. <laughs> we're doing a money belt. We've done one. I even asked Kevin about it. The yeah, other on Wednesday. Day. Yeah. And uh, he said what I what I had imagined. Uh, you know, I, I guess there are several different kinds of money belts. Uh, there's the kind where it's just a pouch on the outside and you can stuff money in. Mm -hmm. But this one uh, that we're making today is uh, like for a hidden, a hidden yeah. compartment. And uh, this is the one that I made as, as a prototype. And it just looks like a regular belt on the outside. Then when you turn it over, it's got a zipper pocket in it. And I put several $100 bills in here so you could see. Wait a minute, there's just a one in here. I guess that's all I put in. Was uh, one. You paid me before we came in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you can put money in here. It, when I built it, I thought, man, you can't put anything in there. But fold your bills up and you can put a lot of money in there if you want to. But uh, it's just a single piece of leather on the outside. I used about a seven to eight ounce leather. And for the liner and the, the zipper gusset, I used a, a two to three ounce leather. Uh, the lighter weight leather you have uh, for the zipper pocket, uh, the better off you'll be. You know, you'll have a little bit of stretch to it. But anyway, I've already I've taken the liberties to uh, put the zipper in another gusset already. So just to save a little bit of time, you know, uh, I just... Uh, this is about a 16 or 18 inch uh, zipper pocket. I forget which what I made, but uh, you know, it's got a half inch opening and the zipper just stitched around the outside. You know, it just opens from one end to the other. And uh, I used an embossed belt blank here, which I've already put a finish on. And we're gonna just cement this to our belt blank and stitch it on there. And then the the liner is a bit larger than the blank itself. So uh, after I'm all done stitching, then I'll uh, trim that off and we'll uh, finish the edges on it. I did this a little bit different up on our screens today. I put both of the chats on there. And I've got my phone here so I can control my computer so I can switch cameras from it. So we'll, see how, right. that, we'll see how this rolls today. All right. But anyway, so now I guess the next step will be to... Uh, cement this uh, there's a little paper down there let's see this would be extra the only thing I've got to be aware of is when I put my cement on this I only want to cement the edges here where the where the zipper pocket is Otherwise, there won't be any place to put all you that all that cash you're trying to hide. You know what I mean? I don't get to carry any cash. You don't your wife is uh -uh. curtails that. Yeah, she she keeps a hold of it all. Okay, I'm just going to put a mark here at each end so I remember where to stop my cement, and this will be the end of my liner. I'm guessing you don't want to cement over the zipper part of it. No, yeah, and that's that was the point that I was trying to make a minute ago. Did you make this one my size? I don't know. You can try it on and see. All right, I'll try it on with my athletic shorts. Doesn't have any bath uh, belt loops in it. <laughs> Look at that. Does it fit just perfect? You did. I like the color of this old world harness that I, you did. Yeah, that's old world latigo. Oh. And I like it. You know, our, our burgundy latigo, which is a beautiful color, would make great belts other than the fact that it bleeds. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you use it for a belt or something like that, it will bleed on a, on your pants. And that's not really great. Dean said he had a hard time, he has a hard time hand sewing the zipper. Well, I can, I can feel your pain, Dean, but... To, you know, if you're hand sewing, I mean, that's the only choice you've got. You you could try to just cement it in, but you're going to pull that cement apart eventually, especially with the 
the nylon zipper tape, you know, it doesn't hold the cement. Very so, and, and you said on your zipper tape, you did the basting tape and then stuck it down? Yes, I just used basting tape to stick it down. That'll hold it good enough until you can get it stitched. And then you just run a stitch on it? Yes. And you use the Class 26 to do that? Uh, yeah, you can, any light machine. Yeah. I guess you could use a class three or a class four, but uh, you know it doesn't make the prettiest stitch on that light of leather. So use whatever you've got. Jeffrey Joseph says a flashback to the seventies. <laughs> Let me zoom this camera out over there. These, this is a really a lot simpler deal than what I was thinking when I had my... Are you saying we should have put it off so long? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we thought when we shouldn't have thought and didn't think when we should have thought. But... Right. Okay, now I've got to remember to do the same thing up here. And not... oh, i got a nice picture of your glue pot there. Move over this. Okay. And if you get a little too much glue on here as far as uh, sticking your zipper tape down okay. or you don't want it stuck, you can all, you can still break that glue loose. And I'll show you that here in a minute because I'm sure I've got a little more glue than I need on here. Darcy coming in for a sneak attack. Sneak attack. Yeah. Let's see. Tori Jones says, I use the narrow two-sided tape to put my zippers in first and then punch a hole through the zipper and the leather, then hand stitch it up. Sounds good. With that lightweight liner, I just use a Singer Heavy Duty Amazon Special. Yeah, that would that would work, I'm sure. You know, uh, home sewing machines will sew leather as long as you don't have, if you don't overload it, mm -hmm. you know, with leather. But this light two to three ounce leather, or even one to two ounce, you know, would be make a good liner for something. How do you like decide that. where you wanted to put your zipper? Uh, I just put it on the buckle side because I figure if someone was trying to rob you, and that's the reason for a money belt, I would think, was to keep your money a secret. But if somebody did come up and say, I want all your money, you say... Okay, I gotta take my belt off first. Then you got a buckle right there yeah. to whack him in the head with. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's the reason I put it on the buckle side. You know, I just hedged it over towards that side. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you're thinking you're gonna have easy access to your money with a money belt on, I think you're. It's wishful thinking. Yeah. All right. Got the glue on. Let me hurry it up a little bit with this hair dryer. That's pretty fancy. Yeah, Rock Leatherworks has said he's made a few of these, but he put the zipper in the center, so if you have to unbuckle the bell, it doesn't show. Well, if, if you unbuckle your belt and it's on the buckle side, it's not going to show either. Yeah, because it's going to be laying on your pants. I wouldn't think, yeah. But, you know. I mean, if I you found a way. It, I don't think it's a big deal where you put it. This is, this is what you said before. This is the way I'm doing it. And if you find a way that works better for you, you do it that way. That's right. You That's hold this, right. I'm going to hold this up in the air for you. Well, thank you. I appreciate the thanks. Did you tool this up? Originally, yes. Oh, is that on the embossing? Yeah, this is just an embossed belt blank. But I did make this pattern. You did make the pattern. Years ago, yeah. Yeah. I and think we call it uh, the Denny the low flower. flower. Low flower. And that's something Liz came up with. We didn't know what else to call it. She's quite a thinker, that guy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they to 
today? They are down in Ozark at the Finley River Center. You know that mill that was next to that the mm -hmm. Finley River Bridge? Mm -hmm. They moved that mill just a little bit and they turned it into kind of a crafting type of center. It's also a restaurant. They does have a restaurant in there. And is this is like a grand opening or something? I think this is the first maybe big event that they're having, like crafting stuff down there. So we're going to be a part of it. Oh, great. They took the Glowforge down there. I think they took some more cowhide rugs. You guys, she was telling us you guys were just selling through those cowhide rugs. Boy, all you out-of-towners that don't know what Farm Fest is, it's a, it's just a big, uh, it's like a trade show for farm equipment mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and stuff like that. And we always set up a booth down there and take a bunch of cowhide rugs and knickknacks and stuff. All the FFA chapters from around this part of the, the high school states yeah. uh, send their have send busloads of kids there on Friday, <laughs> and, and uh, so we have a bunch of knickknacks and stuff for them to buy and, and look at. And uh, boy, I bet we sold sixty cowhide rugs. I think that's what Liz told me. Wow. I mean, we just kept hanging them up. We've got two big 12-foot uh, farm gates that we hang the rugs on mm -hmm. in three tiers, you know, just solid across both of those gates. And we filled that up probably five times. I was trying to look. On, I don't know how to turn on and off my uh, the picture-in-picture uh, -picture thing on, oh. my, on my phone okay. oh, from my computer. Well, I'm going to stitch this now. Yeah, I've... Uh, made a, a stitch groove in this belt all the way around so i'm gonna see if i can follow that and got a little sample piece here that i'm gonna try i already set this once but tony's pretty bad to turn it off and stuff so i'm gonna test yeah it. i did I see if I can try to mess with it just a little bit. I think it's stitching pretty good. I like that. All right. I don't know if we're ready or not, Tony, but here I go. Oh, that light got moved in the. Can I move that light out of the way? Like that gonna hurt? Be okay there? Okay, let me just take these people on a little run. Now you can move the light where you need to. I got it for a good spot. All right. I like it then too. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to use the guide on this because my line of material is oversized. So you're just running in your groove. When you uh, make a stitch groove, it's easier to uh, stitch a straight line than it is to do that. Not saying it's so cool, but <laughs> by any means. I'm using this glass six machine again with a 138 thread. And I believe I've got a size 21 needle in it. Stop the seven back so I don't run over it. This is the nicest machine I've ever seen. I really like that 26. If I had one, that would be what it is. I think we've done a holster on it too before, didn't we, Denny? It is so smooth. Yeah. controllable that servo motor is a lot better than a clutch motor huh oh, especially for your first time pushing down a pedal yeah. those clutch motors it's either go or no I've got the mild 
handling machine here in the shop that I use a lot. Uh, it's got just a clutch motor on it. I know, I was going to use it one time. You said, never mind, let me just run that for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it works good, but if you aren't ready for it, it it'll take you by surprise. But it's the only machine I've ever owned, to tell you the truth. I made saddles with it for 30 years. Shafts, everything I did, I did for that machine. They have the Adler that you have over there? And it's not that you can't u learn how to use the clutch motor. Well, it, the servo is just a lot easier. It's just like a vehicle. When I was growing up, there were very few automatic vehicles. Yeah. I can't say that there were a lot of automatic vehicles. But, uh, there were still lots and lots of good standard transmission. A lot of people you hung out, you drove a stick, yeah, or had it on the tree, right? And driving a tractor, you know, they're all. Oh yeah. They're all. Standard transmission. You know, I grew up knowing how to run that, but now kids, you know, they aren't exposed to that a lot. And yeah. You know, I drove a stick Denny up until like two years ago. Did you really? Yep. Yeah. All I'd had, all I'd owned was a five speed. But these, the, these machines are the same way, you know, a lot of the older machines. They have a lot of new machines too, you know, because they have a clutch motor on them. Could you take that Adler that you have and put a servo motor sure. on it? Sure. Yeah. I could. And I was going to it one time. One time I was going to sell it. Yeah. And I brought it down here and I was going to clean it up and put it up for sale. And right. I used it a few times and I thought, why am I going to sell it? <laughs> I kind of like this machine. Yeah. Tori Jones says she has a sale right machine and it has a servo motor. Yeah, you just switch out the motor on there and then just change your belt over from the clutch motor to the servo motor and bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. The, if you just put a servo motor on a lot of machines, though, you lose a lot of torque. So what? Like how the, would you how would you get that torque back, Denny? Uh, with a, a speed reducer. You could have a speed reducer, which is a, a big old wheel that you yeah. mount on there as well. Then you can go slow and punch through thick. We may be making a money belt, but we got all sorts of answers. Yes. <laughs> just if it's not the answer that you think is right, just pretend it is until the end of the video and then comment below and then we'll learn something new. <laughs> Jeff Allen says FedEx is supposed to be delivering a fuel pump. I don't know if that'll work on a sewing machine, but he's getting a fuel pump. <laughs> You have a pull start on your sewing machine at home, Denny? <laughs> no. All right, I think we got stitched here, but I didn't even miss it. You still got all your fingers? Got my fingers. And they have no extra holes? No extra holes. I'd say we've done it right then. All right. Now I'm going to clip and burn the end of these threads. Let's see if we can see it on that camera over there. Slide that way just a little bit. There you go. And this I didn't uh, backstitch here because this is underneath on the turn back. It's not going to get any major. Oh, yes. Yeah. You're about to cause a fit here. Thanks, Tony. I'll throw everything on the floor. Got an extra doohickey there. All right, now I'm going to take, and I've got a new round knife here that they brought me. Uh, I think they someone sent it to us as a sample, but boy, I really like it. It's kind of a... Yeah, let's go to that overhead camera. Let me slide my mouse back over that way. It's kind of a... Let me zoom the camera in a little bit. Pretty nice got an etched finish on it yeah we're gonna try to get some different um, custom 
one-off type of tools yeah. on some mauls uh, from a guy. And then I was looking at a guy. He hasn't made head knives, but he made some Japanese skiving knives. Mm -hmm. And he has the left-handed one. Really? What do you? Would you like to try one? Sure, I'll try one. I'll try anything once. <laughs> I really like this knife. It's got a really nice thin blade on it. Tammy on Facebook says, or she asks, what type of glue are you using? Which seems to be the, always the question when we dig out our glue pots in our Renia TS boy. This is, uh, what do we call it? The glue? Van, Van, Van Grip. grip. Van yes. Grip. Yes, it's just a, a contact cement. It's the same thing as what you would use with barge. It's, yeah. Well, we had a boot maker that started working for us, and that was what he used, and he wanted to use it in the shop, so we started buying it. If you need some and you are local, you can bring your bring your stuff in, your container in, and we will fill it up for you with van grip. Yeah, but basically, you know, you can use barge or master's uh, contact cement works the same. You know, this is just what we use because we buy it in large quantities mm, rather than I, just gallon size. I think we get a 55-gallon drum yeah. of it, if I'm not mistake, mistaken. Yeah. You're pretty handy with that thing. I don't know if anybody's told you that before. Well, I, think I try I to be. Have. I try to be. And since we don't have a, a line finisher in here, I'm going to sand the edges just, just a little bit. Yeah. I cut it pretty close, so it don't take much. You're just, how come you're putting it on the edge, just so you can run that? Yeah, just so I've got something to... I've heard people talking about just pushing one way on your sandpaper. Is that doing anything? You found it doing anything different? Well, sounds like it would take twice as long. Because <laughs> I can sand going forward and back. And yeah, back. the... I don't know. And the point was, I think they were saying it lays the, the, lays grain. the grain all down one way. Yeah, I don't could know. could be. I don't know. We, when we were talking about it, when Kevin was in here the other day, mm -hmm. we were talking about finishing edges. And, and I still contend the main thing on burnishing your edge is one thing, you've got to get it flush. Right. Your edge is flush. But the main thing is moisture and friction. You know, that's that's what will uh, burnish your edge for you. I mean, if you don't like doing edges, that's the final part. And you want that final part to be... Yeah be looking good so take your time and do it and you could you could gum track it and then sand it again with the lighter sure with the lighter sandpaper if sure. you wanted to i mean there's a lot of people that take a lot of time to do a lot of different steps on this but you know if you're trying to get just that glass smooth edge which is fine but if you're trying to make any time you know you aren't going to get that. yeah but, to, yeah, if you do a lot of sanding with different grades of sandpaper, you know, keep stepping down to get smoother. I, see. I would be willing to bet that what I'm doing will make about as nice an edge as anyone would really need on most projects. Chevy guy, Nick, he said, who made that? I'm not sure who he's talking about who made that. That knife? Oh, well, I know. Maybe that was what he was talking about. <clears throat> if it's the knife, I believe it's a company called Odin. Uh, nope, it's not. Ivan. Ivan. It's Ivan 201. You have a couple over there. Yeah. I think we're going to start carrying it. There was some samples to send in to us and really nicely made. Yeah, they're well made tools. <clears throat> they two different types. One of them had like a uh, natural kind of a red colored mm -hmm. grained handle like but they were a little different tools these I think these are the the top of the line these ones yeah. with the black handle and the Damascus looking blades on them okay now I'm gonna use a number two uh, this is a western edger we used to call them just a fork edger but uh, I'm gonna use that oh you ran out of my picture hold on let me go back to that camera all right you're good go ahead okay And an edger, a lot of people have trouble with an edger. The deal is you want to hold them to approximately a 45 degree angle to your leather. And that'll, that'll cut the full depth of what your uh, your tool will cut. Some people are too, uh, 
timid with it, and they don't they don't get the full potential out of uh, out of their cut. Now, if you if you went over that again and tried to edge it again, would it edge it? That's what you? that's what my point. I'll I'll do that. Okay. And it might take off a little bit here and there, okay. but I think I pretty much got the whole thing edged. Yeah. See, I got a little fuzz there. But it doesn't let you go any deeper. So if you yeah, feel like you miss something, you could go over it again. Yeah, the only time that you can overcut, cut more than you want, mm -hmm. is if you're using too big an edger. Mm. If you're doing that, you need to step down. And you're going to do your same same size on both sides. Same size on the bottom, yes. And I could have actually used this this edger to actually trim this this leather with. Oh, instead of using your round knife? Yes. We trimmed it and edged it at the same time. But Nick, who, that's who we were talking about uh, on those Japanese ones. What's that? Those Japanese, his name is, he's from uh, Texas, I believe. His screen name is uh, Hicks. I need to show him to Rusty. Rusty, I forgot to show him to him in the meeting. That was the first time I'd seen him all week was yesterday. Show him those knives, you mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, and we've got a treat here when, when I get kind of finished up here, which will be pretty soon. Uh, yeah, maybe Clayton. Clayton's going to come in and show us a little bit of airbrush on something something new that kind of came about. When I heard he was doing that, I said, good, I've never in my life used an airbrush. How come you went further on one side and not? Because it went further. What went further? Edgers. My edger did. Oh. I'm going to use one of these small edgers. See right here, it cuts down from, from two layers to one layer mm -hmm. that that has been uh, split down for that turn back. So it's yeah. pretty thin. Oh, can we slide that way maybe just a little bit? Yeah. Maybe up forward a little bit? I don't There you go. And that fork edger wouldn't wouldn't edge this much. There was too much, too much material I here see. hanging down. But that's going to be in your turn back anyway. You're not really going to be yes, seeing it anyway. Yeah, that's the turn back. Okay. Let's see. Elizabeth says, okay, some people say burnishing is silly because it will rough with use, which is true. But I've had some unfinished edge bracelets that look burnished in spots just from use. It's a little confusing. This is a belt that I've worn for approximately a year that's been burnished exactly the same way I'm ready to do this. And yeah, it's a little bit rougher, but yeah. I guarantee... We're done with the sewing machine, right? Yes. Okay. I guarantee if this wouldn't have been burnished, it would have just been fuzzy right now. But this, it, this makes a pretty good lasting edge. And Kevin and I differ in opinion on this a lot of times because I like to water burnish, and, mm -hmm. and Kevin likes to put an edge finish on it too. That's all right. I'm just going to use, this is just plain water on a sponge. And I'm just going to wet the edge here. I've already sanded this and I just beveled the edge. So now I'm using water. I'm just going to do half of each side at a time. And this is glycerin saddle soap. And I'm just going to rub a little bit of this on. The main ingredient here is the water. And the friction that I, this is a piece of canvas. And I'm just going to rub this. I'm going to rub it and just try to make it hot. And you can feel it through that canvas when it starts to heat up. This is the way I finished edges for years. Way I finished edges on saddles came out pretty good. That's a pretty nice smooth edge. So what if I got it like that? I know you did it with pretty rough when you sanded. What if I what if I if I glistened her down and I went with maybe like a four hundred and then sanded it again and then tried to put a glass edge on yeah, it? Yeah, you you every time you do that you can get a little bit slicker. Mm -hmm. You know, but it just depends on how much time you want to spend on something. You know, and I want to make something that's nice. But I don't want to waste my time either. I want to make a lot of things that are nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it depends. If I was trying to, if I was entering a, a world-class show or something mm -hmm. with this belt, 
I'd probably spend a little more time on the edges. You know what we should have done, though? We should have asked Dean what size he was. We could have made a point. Ask him now. Oh, okay, Dean, what size belt you have? Jacob said, I just got an airbrush, but best tool for dye and resin I've ever used. That's the thing. You can, you, you can, that uh, dye goes a lot further through an airbrush. You can make four ounces go, go quite a ways. Yeah, and from everything I've heard, you can do it a smoother job, too. Which you canvas are... with a lot of streaks. Angela is asking, what kind of canvas are you using? You know what, if you had an old pair, old pair of blue jeans, yeah. and you cut them up into squares, that'd make a good canvas. Yeah, but any we, kind of canvas will work. Uh, the, if you use blue jeans, make sure they're old, all the blue's kind of yeah. not going to come off on them. Uh, but we sell squares. We got canvas squares that we sell. Yeah, it's like tent canvas. I'm not sure what weight it is. But, right. But the weight doesn't matter. Old timers used to use a, a paper grocery sack. Burlap burlap sack? Uh, paper. Yeah. Oh, they use paper yeah. sacks? A brown paper bag. Can you get that still? Good. Sometimes they'll ask you if you use paper or plastic. Mm -hmm. They paper. Hard to have. I need to finish some edges. <laughs> I, need, I need some paper. I got some. I got some uh, burnishing I need to do at the house. <laughs> Uh, cedar barrel says duck cloth could work good. Anything that's that's a got a little bit of a texture on it, but I mean those, yeah. those paper sacks don't. If you wad them up, they make it. The friction, the friction is what does the friction and the want to. Yeah, you gotta have a little want to. And a lot of people will do this on a, a burnishing wheel too, and that'll work. This will make a little nicer edge, I think, than a burnishing wheel, but that's a matter of opinion. Burnishing wheel, you, you want to burnish at a real low speed. A lot of people think high speed is what you want. To. You're going to burn it. You're yeah, not going to burn it. burn it, and, and it gets rougher, it seems like. I've always noticed if I go too fast on burnishing something, it just more of makes a, a hard edge that doesn't feel good, it doesn't really look good. So slow down and just... Get a good friction going on. I'd rather do I'd rather do it by hand than do it on a wheel. Yeah, I would too. I always do. Yeah. You know, and in, our shop, I like in our shop, our production belts we used to make. And I don't know if we still do it or not, but we used that Yankee wax mm -hmm. on a wheel. And that works good too. I mean it'll make a smooth edge. But to uh, there again, you've got to have a wheel to do that with. Did you bring you a, a belt? Yes, I did. Yes, did Dean ever say? He says he wears a, a 36, he's a 36 waist. My current belt is 46. Well, I just need to know where. Your waist is 36, so you'd wear in the neighborhood of a 38 inch belt. What's a great way, you know, we people ask this and I see it show up and chat rooms and so on and so forth. Let me hit camera four here. It's wearing my battery out it's trying to run cameras from my phone. Oh, now it doesn't want to go. How, what would be a good way for somebody to measure a bell? Okay, if you were say, if someone said, I want to make a bell for my, or a, I want you to make a bell for my husband and I have one of his old belts. You would measure from the turn back right here. So put your... Where, where it turns around the buckle. Yeah, sorry this camera's not in focus. It got messed up yesterday. And then we're going to measure... To the hole that I wear it in the most, which oh, let's, be, let's go that way a little bit. Let's go that way a little bit. So he's got, you got two, you got two marks on here where you, where you wear it. So have him put on the belt, go from the turn back that we had. Hold on, let me fix this camera. Hang on, it's gonna wiggle a little bit. Look at that. Okay. So let's go back to our turn back. We're holding it on. We're holding it on our turn back, and he's got two spots that are here, one and two. Okay. And they measure. You got one that's about thirty-eight and a quarter. I would make this a thirty-eight inch belt. 
So I'm just measuring to whatever hole it is, and we'll, that's going to be our middle hole. It would be the middle hole. I would have two holes on each side of it. Okay. And then from that middle hole to the tip, I generally go between six and seven inches. It's just a, how much how much of a tail you like to have sticking out. All right, I am ready to get a piece of. Sorry, I diverted our conversation there for a minute. Oh, GM did ask what was the easiest way. So there you go. Does that answer your question, GM? Is that that would be the easiest and probably the most accurate way to measure? Yeah, I mean you could like, uh, what's his name? Uh, GM at no, the initial Dean. Time. Oh, Dean. Dean said he wears a thirty-six inch. He has a thirty-six inch waist. I would take it that to be a thirty-six inch pants. Mm -hmm. Generally. Uh, you would make the belt two inches bigger, so you would make a 38-inch belt. My belt would probably fit you just perfect, Dean. What will you give me for it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's a general rule. That's not always the case. You're always better off if you can actually measure a belt that's been in use. But I'm going to use the... Oh, Elizabeth asked you, so glad we went over it. I'm going to use some line 20 snaps here. 38 to 39. He said he gets more muscle in the winter. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, I get that too. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just going to set these. Now I want you to notice what Denny didn't put underneath this. He put granite down. But you didn't use an anvil. The no, little, I the didn't. Little. I didn't. You can use an anvil. I don't. I don't. I always get a weird cup on it. No matter what anvil I use, I get a weird cup on I it. Do. But I've been more successful when you said just mash it flat. That's what I've been doing. That's what I do. I haven't hated it since. That's what I do. I mean, a lot of people say, "Oh, you got to have that dome there." That looks pretty darn good, just like can't that. Can't tell it. And uh, you're using a splash. Yeah, it's one that I ground down. You can use just a regular line twenty snap setter, mm -hmm. but I ground this one down. I just like the way it splashes, but I can't use it on this uh, this other side, this uh, socket side, or the whatever you call this. What size? Thing. Do we know what size our belt is that we made here? Not yet. I'll tell you here in a minute. All right. So Dean, from your turn back to your middle hole, what do you have? Did I miss it? The maker's guy, I forget his name, his name is Aaron Heiser, has a huge belt blank with holes all the way down for a sizing tool. Would that be better to use? Sure, it would work fine. If you can get someone to, to try it. Hey, look, um, what, what? Eliz Elizabeth, you don't even have to go to Aaron Heiser. Got a belt ninja here. You can cut your tip on there. You got your hole. You got your turn back on the other end. Bam! There you go. You don't have to go to Aaron. I mean, if you want to go to Aaron, Aaron's a great guy well, down in Texas. Well, out here on our retail floor, we have a tri belt too. Yeah. And that's the way when people come in, if they don't want to measure their belt, they can try that belt on. But uh, you know, if if you don't. Uh, do something like that, you're always taking a chance on making it that's too big or too small. Mm -hmm. Generally too small. It has, the one that's out on the floor has holes all the way down it. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all, they're all marked so that back in the shop they know how big to oh, cut it. 38, he said. He said, you missed it. Probably because I was talking instead of reading. <laughs> it's hard to read the comments because I'm trying to follow. I got YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch all up here at one time trying to read it all. All right, this is just a little uh, heel bar buckle, and I made a keeper for it yesterday. Now, say 38. I, uh, bet I don't have enough room here. No, I don't. You can put a hole all the way out the end, but you'd be yeah. tough tucking that tip down there. I bet you if we 
talk to Denny nice enough, he might he run might. you out a low flower one and he, make he might. What'd I do with that other? This one will be about a I think I measured thirty four. You want me to go see if I can find old Clayton? Yeah, it's about time for Clayton to come because I'm about done here. Yeah, we're going to have to move a little stuff out of the way. By the time you get back, I will. Well, what has he got over here? What's he got What's he got to paint on? Did you do this one? No, you didn't. No, that. that's another embossed. That's an embossed one with a deer seen on it. All right, let me go find Clayton. Okay, and I'm just punching these so holes. You know, Tony, that's on there. Yeah, this is going to be loud. Did you want a gobble on it, too? <laughs> I make these holes about an inch apart. You know what? Clayton was watching our video. So I keep he's, there, he's his, halfway down the hall. He's on there. his way. He said, I heard you. All right. So with this thing that we're going to do, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to record this. Just duck underneath it. I know you're tall, but I have faith in you. Hmm. Right, yeah, this turned out to be about a 32 inch belt. Hey guys. All right. 32. Okay. We'll show our finished product, guys. Yeah, this is our finished product here. Yeah, it's your size. Are you 32 inch bag? I don't know. Probably not. Clayton, where's that $100 bill you were going to put in there for Denny? <laughs> Pull up the paychecks and put them in there. Oh, his paycheck ain't very much. He only makes $4 an hour. Nice small ones. Yeah. 200. Real good. small paychecks. That'd be a month's worth. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, let's clean up our mess before we talk about that over there because we're going to get you in the middle of the table so I can record it at the same time. Sure. Absolutely. I'll watch you guys clean. How you been, oh, how you been, Clayton? Pretty good, man. We've been busy. We uh, had a pretty good morning. We had a couple machines go down. So getting that sorted out. But we have been busy. Did you have a voltage problem? I saw you know, our city utilities you know that there's a problem, but they can't quite put their finger on what. Apparently it was a contractor that was doing the work, so they're claiming they are free of blame so far. Pretty good business. All right. All right, I'm gonna put my belt back on. All right. Don't ask me yeah, why okay. I had it on. All right. <laughs> While you get set up, Clayton, let me move my chaps back over so I can see them. Okay. Now I'm gonna start recording, so I'll, I'll have to tell you when to start going before you explain them. Anything. You we're not recording right now. Well, you're live right now, but it's not re it's not recording remote or um, locally to my computer, which I need it to do. Whatever that means. You know, I, I didn't I didn't bring any highlighter, but I don't know how far we want to go with this. It's, we're just talking about the airbrush, huh? Yeah. Put that sucker front and center. Did you guys get some good interaction today? You guys been chatting it up? It was good. Molly said your belt will work for some of those skinny kids. Yeah. Hey, let me see that. I didn't get uh, what zipper was that that you used in there, Denny? What which? Yeah, you used a nylon zipper. Yes, that's a nylon, a small nylon zipper. Or brown narrow. Yeah, brown narrow. Uh, Gene, this will be. It's gonna. We're live now, but it's gonna be saved um, to YouTube. It'll be on. It'll be saved to YouTube. Yeah, I definitely like some money belts. I've made quite a few of them as well. You yeah. have? Yeah, they're a popular item. I didn't realize that. I had never made one before yesterday. Oh, nice. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. My favorite one I ever did was a guy who wanted to carry gold coins in his belt, and so I did a welt in it and cut out the shape of his gold coins at the right thickness. Uh huh. And uh, that way his gold coins would just pop right in there all the way down the belt. And he could really? See it. Yeah, it wow. was cool. Did the gold coins show then? No, uh, uh they were they're, they're on the inside of the belt. Just something to make him feel wealthy. I guess yeah, if he's going traveling to different countries and stuff, you know. Wow. Take his gold with him. I don't know. Wow. All yeah. Right. Can you spin your gun around? Just so I can see the logo that this came on. Perfect. Well, I brought my guns to town today. 
<laughs> Let me walk back over here, start the recording, and you'll be ready to roll. All right, yeah. I have never what are we used calling? an airbrush. You haven't? Never. Well, here's the one that should have gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm here in an observatory capacity, and that's it. Uh, what are we calling this little guy? It's just a cordless, uh, cordless airbrush. Cordless. Cordless. It has its own air canister? Mm hmm Yeah, so this little thing right here is a little self-contained air compressor. And so you see you've got... No kidding. Plug it in on the bottom. All right? There we go. We'll tilt it up so that you guys can see, too. So, yeah, plug it in the bottom with a little Type-C charger. And then you've got the little LED to battery show you indicator. how much battery you got. Yep. Oh. And that's it, bud. It's a double-action airbrush. Uh, you've got this Which little... Which means what? Double action means what? Double action means you push down to get air, and all you're going to get is air, and then the further you pull back the trigger, the more material it's going to release. Uh-huh. Right? I don't have anything in there right now. I just cleaned it out. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what makes it double action. We'll fill it up here in a second. We'll show you. But it's got this small, I guess, hopper, if you will, or whatever dye or pigment you want to put in there, or even a finish, I guess, if you wanted to. wanted to spray a finish out of it. The liquid's just got to be thin enough so that it'll actually pass through the airbrush and out the tip. Right? And it'll siphon properly. So, pretty, like, water thin? Yeah. Can it be thicker than that? Or Turn down my phone real quick. My bad. I want that to keep going off. So, it can be a little bit thicker. Um, so, if you're doing an Angelus paint, I would thin it down quite a bit. You know, paint's got to be thinned out. Use the Angelus Too Thin product. And I would start with probably about 50-50. Um, even up to 70% thinner, 30% paint, depending on how much, how, how much shading you want to do, how fine you want to make it. Um, it'll spray a little bit thicker than that, but whenever you're airbrushing, a lot of times you don't want to lay down a whole bunch of material at once, right? You want to be able to do some fine light shading, coats. And light coats. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I, I, we just got this the other day. I haven't had a chance to do a lot of playing with it. Um, the only thing I've ran through it is our Fenici Diamond uh, Water Stain. So I've got some over here. Um, I don't see any problem. You could be able, be able to run regular leather dye through it. Uh, your uh, Phoebings dyes, Angelus uh, leather dyes. There's no reason it wouldn't work like any other airbrush. It does have a little bit uh, lower PSI. I think, what are the specs on it, Tony? Around 18 PSI? Yeah. And then uh, a 2,000 milliamp battery that should run you, if you ran constant, around 35, 40 minutes. If you just held it down and just ran it, ran it. Right, right. And so if you're airbrushing projects and stuff, it'll probably last you an hour or two, I would think. Um, and that, that'd, be, that'd be quite a bit of airbrushing, right? That'd be an hour more than I've ever done in yeah, my life. So. Absolutely. We're going <laughs> to get one of these on your desk. I think you're yeah. going to like it. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, so it's a pretty simple mechanism. Like I said, you load your material in here. There is one adjustment you can make back here, uh, which basically controls how far that trigger will come back, right? So basically how much dye you're putting on. Exactly. And so, like I said, being double action, the further you go back, the more material comes out of the gun. Uh, so if we, I believe if we tighten this up, that trigger is not going to come back quite as far. And so it's going to limit how much will come out at once. Whereas if we loosen it up, that trigger is going to come much further back. And you're going to be able to lay down quite a bit more. So we'll go ahead and load it up here. What's really nice about these water stain bottles is that little dispenser. No kidding. All right. So I'm not going to thin this down or anything. It's definitely thicker than your solvent-based eyes. Yeah, that's not water thin. Uh-uh. Let's push our little cap back on there. But this would be super handy for taking to any little craft festivals. No kidding. You know, any uh, anything where you need to airbrush on location. So just pushing down. We've got air traveling out. I'm not pulling back at all, so there's no material flowing. As they slowly pull back, it'll slowly start to come out, right? And so you can see, you can get pretty detailed with it and do pretty fine lines. Or you can come way back here, start to pull back the trigger more and do a little bit more shading. Wow. So it's a lot of fun. You're not gonna lay down a whole bunch at once. You're not gonna 
probably not going to want to dye like large swaths of you know area at uh, one time but it uh, it will do some really neat stuff so like if you were going to just dye this belt that color that you've got in there you would want as much dye coming out as you could get probably so yeah and you're yeah. going to want to work in in long passes right and cover about 50 percent of each stroke uh, it's a, it's going to be a little bit difficult if you want to dye this all a solid color. It'll be a little difficult to get it just right with this without seeing any lines or any um, you know differences in, in the shade of your color. So, so if you had a, a bigger airbrush, would be better to dye a whole belt with then. Yeah, yeah, and we've even used uh, things like your HVLP, you know, cup guns, larger guns like that. If you're doing like an entire belt. Um, or a little bit bigger airbrush with more more volume flow. So we'll go ahead, we're gonna try and do the edges of this belt. Let's see how this goes. So oftentimes we'll do what we call a sunburst effect, where we go down the edge of the belt. Get a little bit of inconsistency there in our spray. So we just dye the edges of the belt and we allow a little bit of overspray onto the edge onto the face of the belt. Well that is so cool. I've got to have one of those. And I haven't done anything with it. It's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah. And you can see you can get really detailed with it. So if we just want to try to do the border, we'll just basically not allow as much material out. And you can be really detailed. Yeah. You get in there and just do that border of the belt. And that doesn't overspray at all. Not much. You know, it'll get a lot of that. So it takes a little bit of practice to get good with, you know, to get nice, even color, um, getting the right effects. But, man, it's a blast. You can sit here and play with these things for hours. Matter of fact, when they first brought it over to me, that's pretty much what I did for the first hour is just sat there with a piece of paper and played with different effects. So when you go to clean that, how do you clean that? Uh, so when I cleaned it the other day, I just ran some clean water through it. So I like it's got a, it's a water base dye right. that you're using. Exactly. So with the Fenici water stain, as long as it hadn't been in there very long at all, I just ran some clean water through it. Even if you got some hot water, that works really well. Uh, or you can use something like acetone. Uh, denatured alcohol works great for your solvent based dyes. And just run it through till. Yep. So you'll you'll dump it into your little hopper here, spray some through it, and then uh, the instructions also tell you to help clean out the hopper or clear any blockages. You can actually block the tip of it with your finger, and then start spraying, and it'll actually bubble up through the uh, through the uh, hopper there. Backwash. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of spit out anything, yeah. right? It is cool. Exactly. It's pretty neat. You can have a lot of fun with it. You start getting into cutting out stencils. You do any laser engraving and, you know, you do something like taping off your project and lasering it. And then you can go back and, and weed out a lot of your tape lines and airbrush it. It's, there's a lot of different possibilities. The only downside that I've found to this airbrush is just changing, if you want to change your colors. You have to obviously clean out the, the airbrush and your little hopper here. There's not a quick way of changing out the colors. But the cleanup's not really that big of a deal. Hey, what makes this a lot easier too is if you have a, uh, almost like an easel to put your projects on instead of trying to do them flat. Oh, so you can do it out in front right, of you? Right, so you can do it in front of you and keep it more upright. Wow. It does make it a lot easier. Well, 
and amazed. I didn't realize it was that simple. Yeah, absolutely. Gonna get a little bit of blockage. I think the water stain that I grabbed here is probably kind of old. <laughs> it's getting a little thick. It is. It's, it's extremely simple. It takes a little bit, a little bit of practice to get used to the dual action and to get good with it. Uh, but really, I mean, you can start making some pretty neat stuff right off the bat. And one thing I, I tell people with airbrushing uh, different projects, people will get real caught up whenever they see little little inconsistencies in the shade of their color. Uh -huh. But once you put a finish over it, I it mean, it fades everything. It really yeah. blends it in. Yeah, use something like a highlighter or goof proof. You know, it'll really blend it all together. Just like just like my tooling projects, I hate the way they look until I'm almost ninety percent finished, and then yep. it kind of comes together. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. right at the end. Um, but yeah, they're, they're super neat. I'm excited to be able to play with this thing because it does give you some capabilities for doing some pretty fine detail, you know. Well, and it's so portable. That's the yeah. really cool part about it. It's nice. You don't have this, you're not dragging around this hose and trying to work around it and have to have a compressor with you. And, right. Yeah. Charge exactly. it up in your car. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Charge it up in your car, wherever, whatever event you're at. You know, it's detailed enough, you can get in there and do a deer face, I guess, or do the deer's body, give them a little shading. Have we tried any of the other cups on that, Clayton, to see if it they screw into it? I haven't. I haven't yet, no. No, there's still more experimenting to be done with this thing for sure. Mm -hmm. It's still a very new product. We wanted to get it out there for sale for you guys. And what, I think, this is day number three we've had it. Right, right. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to do another more detailed video on it yep. and tell you uh, all the, whatever accessories will work with it and hopefully show you some cooler stuff. Any idea what the price is going to be on it? I do know what the price is going to be on it. So if you're not a wholesale customer with us, it's going to be 85 bucks. Otherwise, it's going to be 75 so 75 bucks you might find at other places that might be on upwards of 95 100 dollars we're going to come in a little bit better for you yep absolutely well, i think that's a deal yeah that's it is. it's been 75 bucks or you know just to play around with it yeah that's a lot of fun all right well that's all we got if you want to hang out more we're going to go over to uh twitch and hang out over there awesome. and mess around i think i've hung all i need to i think you've hung out long enough yeah but that is cool, Clayton. I'm impressed. That's pretty neat. We'll take it back over there and let you play with it at your desk. Uh, it does come with the USB charger. Yeah. It does come with a USB charger that just plugs into your wall. You can plug it into your computer to charge it that way, but just a normal 120 volt plug-in. Nice. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. All right. Appreciate it. You guys have a good weekend. Yep. Have a good one.